So today let us uh, build an app, a simple hello world app, but we'll uh, also add something interesting to this app. So we'll do two, two things mainly. Number one, we'll uh, create uh, an app using uh, Forge and uh, we'll do it for uh, Jira. And the first part of this hello world app is uh, to simply display a message. I'm of course following this uh, documentation. And there is also a second part of this uh, Hello World app where you can display the number of comments. But what we'll do, uh, instead of displaying a number of comments or along with the number of comments on an issue, we will also display, let us say, the last comment. And this is something that people always want to do, like display the last comment somewhere. And we have done it many times before. Um, if you have been following my channel, just search on my channel last comment you will find uh, how to do it on server using script now how to do, you, do how to do it using a script now on cloud and uh, the only thing that you need to uh, uh, you need to be aware of is how to or how, what all you can do with the rest api so let us start uh, uh, this uh, this this process of app development on cloud using uh, using Forge. I have already developed the app, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to walk you through what all the steps I did. And I'll, uh, of course, let you take a look at the documentation first if you want to do it yourself. It won't take long. Uh, by the way, before you can develop an app, you have to set up the environment. So I have, I talked about how to do it, how to set up uh, Node.js, Docker, and of course, Forge on your computer. I, I have done it on uh, Arch Linux. So in case you want to do it on Linux or or, or Arch Linux, then you can uh, you can maybe watch that video if you want. So starting with the app development, um, once you have of course your Forge installed, all you need to do you need to run this uh, run this command called Forge Create. And once you do that, it will ask you for the name of the app and then you can select uh, the category. The category should be UI kit because if you have, if you have to display something uh, like a panel, so you have to also select a template and then it will of course uh, do some magic and it will create a folder for you. Once, once that folder is created, you can go inside the folder. And uh, once you go inside the folder, if you take a look at the files, and uh, and what all was generated it will basically have uh, things like uh, a directory called source readme file package.json package uh, hyphen locked.json node underscore modules and uh, manifest.yml so this is of course uh, uh, not different from what you do using node.js so because it is a node.js application and this is my this is my application. I mean, you you can see here within my SRC directory, I have this index.jsx file. We'll come to this file uh, later. The first thing that you can do is uh, once you are done with this, you can go to the manifest.yml and you can uh, modify things like maybe the title or maybe if you have to develop, or maybe if you have to change uh, other things like maybe you want to change the icon. You you can take a look at uh, things that you can change here. Of course, I, th I think it is a good idea to change at least the, the title, like uh, the title of the app. And uh, once you are done with the changes, um, you can then uh, run a command called forge deploy. And it will, of course, uh, deploy the app for you. And at the same time, when you have to install it on a specific uh, Jira instance of cloud, you can uh, then run this command called forge install. It will then ask you for the product, which is, of course, Jira and then you can specify your site URL, which I did. Uh, if I show you my my manage app section, let me just go to the apps. And uh, if I show you how it looks like, it is of course like any other app that you can install that you, I'm sure you have been installing apps. Uh, it will appear in the manage app section. So if you go to the manage app, you will find your app called Forge or whatever title you have given to your app. Let, let us say in my, in my case, it is Forge app for Ravi. If I take a look at the, uh, uh, oh, by, by the way, this is basically the title, not, not the app name. The app name is uh, Hello World app. 
and you can see the vendor which is me Ravi Sagar and uh, there is a version as well I'm, I'm sure when you add things like screenshots uh, things will appear here and uh, if you're doing this development on local and if you're if this is the development version then I believe there will be a name called development now that once you install this app it will you will see this button on top and the moment you click on the button it will uh, then display this issue panel where it will display the message like hello world thanks for coming whatever you want to uh, display here so let me show you my index dot uh, dot jsx file so basically if you look at the code uh, you, you don't have to modify anything uh, the moment you create a new app with the ui element and uh, of course jira issue panel it will generate the code for you and uh, you can dis you, you can see here that there is a message hello world that will be displayed but we have to do a few more things apart from just creating a simple uh, simple hello world app uh, we want to maybe use the rest api and atlassian has done a good job here by giving or by providing these uh, tutorials so in the second part of this uh, hello world app they have shown how to call a jira api now if you can go through the you, you can go through the page what basically uh, you have to do is you have to basically first uh, make sure that uh, you have to install this uh, this this package called forge api and you can do that easily by the way it, it, it won't take long and by the way uh, in the previous video, I also talked about uh, Forge Tunnel. So basically, when you are uh, trying to test your app and you want your changes to be reflected without, I, I mean, you can you can keep on deploying again, but if you run Forge Tunnel, any changes that you do will be reflected, small changes. And uh, it is a good idea to, that you do it. I have also done it, if you see here, I have this uh, force tunnel which is always uh, running at the very bottom I mean uh, you can do it in your terminal I've done it within my Visual Studio code so I can uh, make a change up on top and I can see what is happening and uh, by the way uh, I f f have used uh, I'm running docker with uh, sudo uh, because without sudo my force tunnel was not working and I have no idea why. I guess it is some permission issue, but uh, with sudo, it works. So that is what I'm doing. And uh, uh, yeah, talking about, of course, how to interact with Jira API, you have to first install a Forge API uh, package. It won't, uh, it won't take long. And once you do that, you can then uh, modify the code to basically, uh, I mean, you, you can you can go to the page and they have described exactly what you have to do for example you have to first um, import this uh, API package then you have to uh, use a method that you can of course I mean it, it is a method that you can uh, uh, that you can copy from the documentation uh, where you can see here that it is using nothing but rest API like if you're using a rest API 3 issue and if you pass in the issue ID uh, which will be there using uh, which you can fetch using uh, I believe uh, product context dot issue uh, key so if you are let us say looking at an issue it will have an issue key uh, so that you don't have to worry about it you just need to pass it to this method and once you pass the issue ID to this uh, method let me show you my method I, I have two methods uh, the first method is uh, basically doing the exact the exact Thing that Atlassian is doing it is simply returning the whole JSON uh, as it is so if I uh, if, if I look at my JSON that is returned by rest slash slash API slash 3 slash issue then issue key followed by comment you will uh, get something like this basically it will have uh, this huge JSON it can be huge uh, but you will have a JSON and what we are trying to do using this method is uh, we are focusing on the comments so this comments will be uh, the actual part of your JSON where you have all the comments now if you look at the code from Atlassian they have basically used this method to uh, to basically store these comments in an array called comments 
and uh, if you do something like comments dot length it will give you the length of number of comments and that is what the example is uh, is doing for you if you have let us say three comments it will display three if you have four comments it will display four and so on but what i wanted to do i wanted to basically add my own uh, function to display the last comment like the very last comment or uh, maybe first comment whatever you want to do maybe you want to display later on to maybe uh, maybe on the right hand side somewhere else but i think it is good to you know experiment and uh, do something that makes sense uh, especially especially when you are trying to solve a problem now what i did i copied this method fetch comments for issue and i made my own my own uh, method here fetch last comment for issue and the the only thing that i'm doing here is uh, instead of passing the data dot uh, comments i'm doing further things first i'm checking always to error uh, like always make sure that your con that it that your code won't break for example if the number of comments is equal to 0 then i'm just displaying a message here like no comments yet be the first one if if number of comments uh, are not 0 or if it is more than 0 then I'm doing further things like I'm fetching the last comment and for fetching the last comment um, it is not very difficult you can uh, if you know how JSON works I mean if, if you lo look at the JSON for example if I open my last comment I can see here and of course it is same for any other comment within my comments I have uh, what I have a body and then within body I have content and then uh, within content I have things like because if you look at your if, if your co comment has uh, formatting like bullets or whatever else then then it will be not just uh, i mean you, you can have more than one entries uh, but let us say if you would, if you just want to fetch the maybe the maybe the first entry like comment uh, sorry con content and then uh, you will have something like uh, text here so you can uh, you, you can do that using uh, uh, using like dot body dot content and if you want to access the first element then do zero then again dot content zero and then dot text i mean it is up to you how you want to manage it but i'm just trying to show you very quickly how it works and then i'm uh, returning this last comment which i am uh, displaying in my uh, which i'm basically storing in a in, in a variable called last comment in my original method and i'm displaying it along with the uh, along with the original message so if you now look at uh, your uh, your issue and if you do let us say a refresh two things will happen if you if you have your force tunnel open you may have let us say things that are uh, that are probably um may, maybe maybe you are uh, trying to print something something in the console using console.log so you can see things here but uh, if you want to also display that particular uh, last comment text then you can access it and then you can um, display it under this uh, fragment uh, within these fragment tags and if you look at your issue it says uh, this is my last comment L let us add one more comment just for your just for the sake of uh, this example this is uh, another comment uh, um, on this issue so if you save it and if you go back to your uh, let, let me just refresh it if you go back to your uh, force tunnel terminal window it will of course take a couple of seconds and then it will uh, uh, it will display something here like uh, this is another comment on the issue on this issue if you go back to the uh, if, if you go back to the issue itself you can see here the very last comment that you added on the on the issue so we'll continue looking at uh, various things that we can do with the with the forge uh, platform i'm trying to of course build an app and uh, and uh, I, i'm doing it because as i mentioned in my previous video i'm doing it because atlassian's focus is now on cloud and uh, i have never really developed an app on cloud that is also another reason plus i have been learning node.js for the past six months but i 
apart from doing like simple tutorial, uh, I mean simple projects that I found online, I, I was hoping to work on an actual project uh, where I can learn and use this knowledge. So that is also one more reason why I started learning Node.js because I was hoping to develop apps for cloud. And uh, uh, if, if you have to use Forge, you don't have to use Node.js. You can use any any programming language, but uh, because uh, if you look at the examples on the Atlassian website, especially the developer.atlassian.com website, they have used uh, Node.js uh, for their tutorials. So I wanted to, of course, uh, follow these tutorials. And uh, while I'm making these, video, these videos, uh, wherever applicable, I'll uh, share it with you as well. So that is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you also learned something new today. Thank you very much.